Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and welcome to another LEGO City update uh, and today I'm going to be building another cargo wagon for my wonderfully long cargo train headed here by the beast uh, but before we do that I thought I'd do a bit of channel news because it's been a very busy week <laughs> Yes, so it's been a real week of upheaval this week. Uh, I've had the fast food corner modular pulled out so I could use it as part of my new road plate tutorial. So that caused a lot of disruption that you wouldn't be able to see now because it's all gone back in. Uh, I've had my GBC factory all out this week as well, which includes taking that entire row plate in front of it with it. Uh, so I could do some really good quality photographs for my next Lego Ideas submission. I'll be doing that soon and asking for your support uh, in due course. Uh, but more importantly, perhaps than that, you'll see this table is in a bit of an odd position up here, creating a, a very much reduced standing hole. And that was so I could -da, add my blind which replaces the curtain that was covering that uh, window of my real life house <laughs> rather than something Lego. Uh, but I think it looks a lot better. I think you'll probably agree it looks a lot brighter being white and not a uh, dark sort of brown. Uh, I've left the curtain rail up uh, partially because I don't want nasty ugly screw holes showing. Um, but also so I can hang planes from it because uh, up there originally was the big jetliner, which is 7893 from memory. Uh, and that can go back up there, I think. But we could also probably hang another couple of planes off there. I don't know. It's a very good, uh, strong structure to do something like that from. So I may well do that as well. Um, but first of all, I better give a bedoying out to all the people who suggested that I get rid of the curtain and go for the blind, because I think that was a really good idea. Right, let's go to the second standing hole, reduced as it is, uh, to check it out closer up. Yes, yeah, so I don't usually show you my Lego room in this uh, sort of state of partial undress, but I thought I would this time, just to show you what I've been up to. Uh, so what I had to do was to move this table temporarily, it will be going back, kind of slide it right into the standing hole, kind of totally concealing my um, haunted subway station over there, uh, just to give me a little bit of room. And when I say little bit, I really do mean little bit. You see the uh, stepladder's folded up there, but it's uh, pretty much fills the space when it's folded out. And yours truly has to crawl under the tables and pop out there and then stand on that ladder uh, to do all of the drilling at the top to get it all fixed. Uh, but I think it was worth it. Uh, and I've just left us in this state of disarray because I want to mount the planes while I've got access because there's absolutely no way that I'm going to ever be able to reach up into that corner uh, over the farm once everything else is in place. Uh, but another thing that actually I hadn't anticipated but is a bit of a bonus is we've actually gained quite a bit of space on this window ledge. I mean, look at all of that real estate. Uh, now, it isn't at exactly the same level as the tables, as you can probably see with that base plate that I've just uh, balanced on there. And it's about three quarters of a base plate deep. Uh, but I've actually got a quarter base plate uh, kind of layer in the farm somewhere. So what I could do is remove that, shuffle everything forward a bit, uh, and then I'll have a whole base plate uh, behind uh, <laughs> possibly. Uh, I mean, it will mean that I'll have to do some um, kind of 3D texturing to link the lower level with the upper level, and maybe the barn will go back onto the window ledge or something like that. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. So just that tiny bit of the farm that's kind of behind the barn, I think I'll use as farm. Uh, and then the rest of the window ledge I can use as fairground. Uh, so one idea that I already had was to put this great big Ferris wheel, because it seems about the right proportion, uh, kind of where the uh, hand vacuum is at the moment uh, and then basically it would kind of still jut out into what will be the, the normal table but it would be a good use of space and a really colourful thing to be up against that white blind. So tell me what you think of that idea or if you've got a better one. Uh, I don't think the roller coaster will fit because it's just too massive but yeah that's a, that's a real good bonus uh, and it'll add a bit more uh, of layers to the room as well. So, excellent. Right, on to today's video. 
Okay, so on to today's build uh, at the building desk. Uh, and this build really was inspired by a lot of suggestions uh, from the GBC factory series. So GBC stands for Giant Ball Contraption, or in my case, Ginormous Ball Corporation. And that's the business that makes all of these wonderful coloured balls for the entire world. Uh, and as part of that build, we've of course got the van or small truck that's on the ground floor uh, onto which all of the balls are being loaded. Uh, and a lot of suggestions uh, had me build a second one of those to go around Brick Nottingham. But I'm all about diversity, so I kind of preferred two of the alternate uh, ideas, which were first of all to build a container, uh, a shipping container that was GBC inspired, that was full of all of these balls. Uh, and the third one was to build an actual train wagon uh, that's GBC branded and so on. So I thought, well, yeah, it's about time I did one of those uh, and had a second presence of ginormous balls in Brick Nottingham. So... The first thing I did was decide on the logo that I was going to be producing because it's really important that we get this sort of white, yellow, red and blue logo um, onto everything GBC. Uh, and this was actually the delay in uh, getting all of this started because there was just so much, uh, so many little pieces that I needed to get in order to do all these logos properly. But what I decided to do was do some brick built letters uh, so there is the blue G for GBC, the ginormous letter. Uh, and then I need red, which is the next colour in my logo, to do the B. And I'm actually using a one by one Technic brick here. I'm going to use it on its side so we can't actually tell the difference. But, you know, little economies like that uh, save us a little bit of money. And that all helps and adds up. So this is going to be a B. So that's the first bit of the B, and then we need all of these in order. White, red, white, red, white. And then this logo should tie in with all of the branding of the factory itself and the van, and maybe a second van, who knows. So there is our B. Yeah, it's not very rounded. There might be a better way of doing it, I don't know, but this is kind of a fun pixelated way of doing the logo. Uh, and then the C in yellow. So, do that with this. Oh, missing a bit. There, and that, and that, and that. So technically, all of you, should you wish, could have a similar GBC container, actually, uh, arriving in your city, uh, maybe that had been uh, filled with balls in Brick Nottingham. So there is my GBC logo. And I thought, whatever I did, I would have that on it. Uh, and there's another one that I did earlier. Uh, and this is just so, uh, you know, obviously everything's got the same colouring uh, and ties together. But I wanted it to be vertical because it's just going to fit better with the ends of a container. So there we go. There's our logos. So the container body itself, I'm just using a 6x10 plate. And you can put some feet on that just to make it uh, stand up from the ground. Put corner plates on or whatever you want. Uh, and then for the container version of my build, I'm just going to use four of these one by one by five bricks for the four actual corners. And we will be adding the lid on that in due course. Uh, and then I'm going to use the logo bits kind of as the ends. So it's kind of like we had some sort of tailor-made stickers, but not quite. And I think that looks really good uh, and also covers up the uh, axle hole of that uh, red one by one brick. Yeah, so what do you think of that? Now, you won't be able to see the inside so much, so it's not like the mirror writing will be a problem, but I think at least it's bright and colourful. Now, there's no point filling this container with these balls if we can't see them, uh, because, well, that's the whole point, being able to see all the ginormous balls. So what I decided to do next was kind of have open sides, but we can't have it too open, because obviously then all the balls would fall out. Uh, and especially if the second version of this is going to be uh, mounted to a train, then, well, I don't want balls running all around my city. So I'm going to do a one by one tile, one by one plate, one by four tile, etc. on there, just so that marries well with one of these barrier pieces. So I'll put that there. And then just for the spacing, we need two 
one by one round studs in dark grey, in my case, before we can put another one on. And that's kind of a pretty open side, about as open as we can get while still containing these. And then just to make it level at the top, I've got a bit more white in a one by eight plate. So then I can do the other side as well, which I've partially built for speed. So here's the tile bits. Dib, 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 dib. Ooh. So what I think it would be quite fun if you do decide to build this is if you send me a picture of your GBC container in your city, then <laughs> I might even make a little collage of them or something like that. That'd be really good fun just to show how global the reach of ginormous balls are. Right, so the next stage is to fill this up. Uh, and I suppose I can do that relatively indiscriminately. I've got a great big load of these balls, which are not official Lego ones, purely because that would cost me about 40 pounds just to get this many. Um, so they are actually third party ones you can just get from Amazon. And they're just for marble runs, basically. But they're exactly the same and work in the same way. So I think that looks like a good amount. Uh, and then we can put our lid on. And hopefully they won't all fall out at this point. Nope, there we go. So there is stage one, our GBC shipping container. And I think that looks really good fun, doesn't it? Very bright and colourful. Uh, and very in keeping with the rest of it. So for all those people that suggested this as an awesome idea... Well done. Now, as much as I do love this shipping container with its bright colors and full of uh, ginormous balls, uh, I am going to immediately dismantle it. Uh, and that's purely because I want to make a train wagon version of the same thing using the same pieces. Uh, and that's partially because there's such delays in the postage at the moment, especially from Lego bricks and pieces. I've got an order that still isn't here from the very beginning of December. Uh, so I haven't got enough pieces to do two versions of this at the same time, would you believe? All these little one by ones and so on. So it's not that this won't exist in the future in Brick Nottingham, uh, but it won't exist uh, in both formats today. So I will get some additional pieces so we can have the shipping container version as well as what I'm going to do now, uh, which is the train wagon version. So to open one of these, I think we need to sort of crack it like an egg, sort of do that, and then hopefully get all the balls into there. Yeah, that worked well. Uh, and then we can, as I say, recycle most of this uh, into a train wagon. So we need the logos, we need that. And then we also need all of these white bits here. Okay, right, so now we're cooking on gas. So the first thing we need for a train is the train base. Uh, and I'm gonna do this in a way so you can build it too. So we need a two by eight on a two by uh, 12, probably in black, but not necessarily, with two of the buffer pieces, one on each end. And then we can connect the whole of that to a six by, what is it, 14? Mm -mm, yeah, six by 14 plate. So we've got a very basic train carriage. I may as well do the underside first. Just need one of the wheel setups on each end. That's quite easy. And you can do whatever you want in the middle. I've got another one of these uh, inverted six by six type pieces. I think these are really good fun. Really interesting shape for underneath a train wagon. And I'll just decorate the gap with some of these profile bricks in a slightly contrasting colour this time, and then put that ooh, over there. So, so far so simple. There we go. Now I need to start adding, uh, no, I need to add a black layer next of plates. So I'm going to do that here. Have the wonderful train ends that I like to have on virtually all of my cargo carriages. So we'll have one of those on there. And then we'll have a pattern of a one by six next to it on each end. Then one of these ladder pieces next to that on all four corners. That gives it even more texture. Uh, and then the gap that's left, we can do a one by six on as well. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. So now we're getting a bit more built up. Uh, then we can add our white layer, just as we did before with the combination of tiles and plates that's going to be supporting the kind of barrier pieces on the 
sides that will allow us to see inside are all those wonderful ginormous balls. Mm -mm. Uh, and we'll have the logo bits on the ends again, I think. Now, they'll be less visible on the ends this time, just because they're kind of interrupted by those train end pieces. But I don't think that's too bad. Uh, I still think it looks bright and colourful, and you can still kind of see if you really have a good look at what it's trying to say. So there we go. Uh, then we need some columns on the four corners. And for those, I thought I'd make them a bit more colourful. Uh, and including the four dot logo that's kind of on the van uh, that's as part of my factory. So it always goes blue, red, white, ooh, yellow when we do the dots. And I've done that just using one by two Technic bricks with one of the half pins in so I can put a one by one round tile on the end just to make that four uh, dot logo. And then two one by two plates underneath to go up to here. And then we will need a one by 10 in a minute. And then the other side plane. And if we flip it, we'll do the same with that and that and a one by 10 waiting. And the one by 10 is just to pin down the top of the barrier pieces. So put one set on there and pin it down with that. Just joins onto that bit more strength and Ooh, upside down, that onto there with, ooh, not going, there we go, with that. And then we've got pretty much the same shape that we had before, a little bit bigger, so maybe I should put more balls in, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, and then what I'm going to do just to cap that off is use some kind of train roof pieces. And I'm using these just because I had these ones left over from my subway train uh, so I'm going to use those. I'll put the two ends on and that should leave us with a hole for loading them. Now, goodness knows how to get them from the factory onto one of these cars, but nonetheless, <laughs> they, uh, they must be bouncing around all over the place. But there we go. So I'll just take that off and let's load this thing up. Probably going to have to do this a bit more carefully than I did the last one. No, no, no. Oh yeah, I definitely think this will be able to take a few more. But I'll just load it with these for now. Ooh, knew there'd be one escapee. So that is it loaded. Yeah, we definitely need some more balls in there. But it looks pretty good, very colourful, and quite a lot of fun if you ask me. So I'm going to fill this with a few more balls. Uh, and then we can put this on the train. Uh, with the carriage that we did last time that we didn't see on the train, which was the uh, twin tank transporter, uh, and then have them going around Brick Nottingham. Uh, and I may even do a view from the passenger line by way of train cam to sort of show them in action from uh, kind of a minifigure perspective as well. Uh, but do tell me what you think of that. It's a pretty simple boxcar in a way, but I think the sort of grated <laughs> sides that's almost reminiscent of a cattle car or something like that look pretty good and they're all trapped in there oh, help me get out um yeah and the logo's there as well so yeah tell me what you think right so last time we did a cargo train video we created well my version of the twin tank transporter which is this one uh, and we didn't have time that day to get it going around the city so we'll be adding it to the train alongside the GBC one today. And I have done an amendment, which was adding these Octan stickers, which I got from the sticker sheet 60132, a service station. Uh, and you can see I chopped off two more of them there, but haven't used them because I kind of figured that two might be enough. So we've got one on that tank and then not on there. And then the kind of same thing on this side. And I just thought maybe less was more in this particular case. Uh, but do tell me what you think. Uh, so we'll be adding that to our cargo train today as well. Uh, but thanks very much for the suggestion of adding logos onto that. Uh, and of course, we'll be adding today's build, the GBC wagon, which I've filled up with even more ginormous balls. Uh, so that can be added as well. Uh, and I was thinking that if you did want to make the shipping container version 
of the GBC container for your city, uh, you wouldn't have to necessarily buy any ginormous balls to go in it because it could be that the uh, consumers in your city had already bought all of the ginormous balls that had been sent there and now you are sending back the empty container uh, back to Brick Nottingham to be refilled from the factory uh, for more. So maybe that's the story behind that. Uh, but if you do build one, do send me a picture either on Instagram uh, or my email address, which is on the uh, About page of my YouTube channel. Cool. Right. So we need to get all of these added onto the incredibly long cargo train. So we better bring that into view. Uh, and I think we'll put them about here. Cool. Okay. So that's both of those into the incredibly long cargo train. Uh, and I may need to reshuffle these in due course because I realised in doing this particular positioning that I've separated the crook who's disguised as a bit of lumber on the lumber car uh, from what he's spying on, which is the bullion train that's actually full of gold. So maybe I need to reorganise the order of all these carriages to sort of uh, make a more cohesive story. I don't know. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to plow on and get the incredibly long train going. So I'll hold that nice and high to get the signal going. And there we go. Seems like a relatively good speed for the cargo train to be going, <laughs> given that it's a great big lumbering beast. Uh, I think before adding too much more in the way of carriages, even though I've got several planned, uh, I may have to add a bit more power. Uh, we've only got three engines uh, and each only has one motor. So essentially that's all we've got powering that entire length. And there is quite a lot of friction to get uh, through, especially around the corners. In fact, saying that, I might give them all a little bit more juice just because uh, it's going a bit too slowly for my liking. Um, but you can also add a second motor, of course, to each of the engines. Uh, the Beast used to have two all on its own, uh, but I took one out to uh, use on the green one, the Hulk. Uh, but now uh, I always have got the potential to add, well, six motors to these three engines, or, of course, add another engine. Uh, and adding another engine makes the whole train even longer, so that feeds my addiction. My name is Robin and I'm a brick addict. Uh, I just built something, quite literally. <laughs> yeah, looking good though. And everyone's favourite, coming up at the back, it's the train guards. Right, so let's see if we can get the two um, passenger trains going as well. I have to start them off quite slowly because I don't want them crashing into each other because they're on the same track. Come on, Patreon train, there we go. So now I can speed up the white one. And now they're all on one controller. It's relatively easy, he says, uh, to get them balanced. Uh, maybe a bit more on white. When they were on two different controllers and one was on powered up and one was on uh, power functions, it was quite difficult. In fact, it was very difficult. But now you can see I can actually master it while filming. So looking really good. Right, let's see if we can get some low shots, maybe in this gap here, of our cargo train. And there's our new two. Looking good. Oh yeah. Oh, it's so much easier keeping these uh, passenger cars apart. Brilliant. It's almost like famous last words when I say something like that, isn't it? You just think there'll be a massive crash, <laughs> a massive derailment, and um, lots of swearing. Maybe I should get the uh, monorail going as well, and then we really should do train cam. I think Patreon train might be catching up. Oh, well, I do like the new two just because they are very bright and colourful. I think you'll agree. <laughs> just got them there. Let's see if I can whiz along. <laughs> it's 
quite hard to keep up with the camera, really. Maybe we should do a high station shot. Love that spinning cement car. That is probably my second favourite. Yeah, looking good. All right, so we've got the tram going as well now. That's looking really good. Just love the way it changes height as well. It just adds another dimension, quite literally. Ah! Oh no! Oh, the humanity. Yep, at sweat is no more. It got absolutely demolished with its stilts taken out and everything else in a rather impressive train crash, actually. Uh, impressive because it involved all three trains, ultimately. <laughs> I suppose once one has derailed, the rest are going to follow. But I have got the tram going now, as you can see. Uh, and obviously I was a little too complacent in how I was keeping these trains apart. Look, they've caught up again. Slow down white. Maybe speed up Patreon train as well. Yeah, so now it's back to being very hard again, it would seem. <laughs> Just can't seem to get the balance right. But there we go, get the tram going as well. Sometimes it likes to stop. Yeah, so a bit of a catastrophe there. I'm going to have to rebuild uh, Sweat uh, and I might use the opportunity to raise it up just that little bit higher because it was getting a bit overshadowed by the old town in front of it. Uh, and there is the tram. Loving that. Looks really good. I love the way it changes height and all that. It really adds another dimension to the city after all. Uh, but we're here really to focus on the cargo train rather than train crashes. Apologies for my language on that. I'm sure I'll beep it out in the edit. But there are our two new cars going along pretty well. Well, I suppose part of the highlight of train videos is the possibility of a crash. Uh, and if you recall way back when, uh, we actually did a train crash bingo. Uh, I don't know if you recall that, but we... Uh, uh, I gave the suggestion of picking a spot around the track uh, that you might want to uh, assume a train crash might happen at. Uh, so the winning area of that uh, train crash bingo was clearly the at sweat uh, square. <laughs> uh, and now we'll have to play our next round of train crash bingo where you get to uh, try and win round two. Uh, by picking another area of our wonderful train track to decide where the next crash is going to take place. There's no prize, just pride, uh, of which mine is a little dented from that rather horrific uh, accident. Uh, right, OK, I'm going to try and do some train cam now.
There's the vehicle of last week, by the way. And here are the carriages we added to the train today. So I think with two really bright carriages uh, and a build that you can do for a container uh, for your city, uh, it's been a really interesting video. And indeed, with all this train footage, uh, including train cam and a train crash, what more could you really ask for? So uh, I do hope you've enjoyed today's video. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. Uh, and if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And thanks very much for all those people who've been buying uh, big expensive modulars and, uh, and medieval um, blacksmiths and so on. Uh, those uh, small commissions do really add up, so it really does help the channel. Thanks very much. Uh, and next time on Robin Hood Bricks, it'll be Wednesday, so we'll be doing another Brick Haul. Uh, but then it'll be back to Fairground Fridays, another edition of. Uh, and we might not be able to do the table again, just because I'm going to have to hang all those planes and things first. Uh, so if we don't, then we'll just have to do another ride or carnival game, uh, which are all starting to accumulate on that table. Uh, and they're looking pretty good together, I must say. So whatever we get up to for Fairground Fridays... I'm sure it'll be rather fantastic. So until then, see you.